Well, last week, um, we didn't get to the scripture until we were halfway through the message. So I thought today we'll, we'll start with the scripture. Because we're going to be looking at a new series now. A series based on the fifth chapter in Galatians. Particularly the 22nd through the 25th verse that talks of the fruit of the Spirit. And I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed their passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. You ever feel like you're missing something in your life? Love or joy or peace or patience? All those things that the the Bible calls fruit of the Spirit? You want love, but your life is empty, or you want joy, but you're experiencing sorrow? You want peace, but you're troubled? You want self-control, but you are self-destructive. What is missing in your life, and where can you find it? How can you find the fruit that this passage talks about? Well, where does fruit come from? If you're looking for fruit, it helps to look where fruit has come from. And if you ask a kid where fruit comes from, they will probably tell you a store. Uh, or even worse, a box. Because a lot of advertisers have been uh, gotten in the habit of trying to uh, convince us that, that things are fruit that aren't really fruit, like fruit snacks that are really just gummy candies. Or the uh, green apple flavor, um, which is really ethyl pentanoate. Or Fruit Loops, which say they have natural fruit flavors, but... There's no actual fruit in Fruit Loops. And I, I always assumed that the different colors of Fruit Loops had different flavors. Anybody have the same assumption that the orange ones were orange flavored, that the, the red ones were cherry flavor, or maybe strawberry, and the purple ones would be grape flavor? But no, they're all the same generic fruit flavor that they spell F-R-O-O-T, fruit. You ever notice that on the box? Fruit Loops. (laughs) You know, we think that the kids are are confused, and and, uh, and they probably are, because you can't make fruit. You can't crank fruit out of a factory. Fruit is grown, you have to cultivate it. You can can help it grow, but it comes from the earth. It comes from a tree or a bush or or a vine. So kids get confused when they hear about Fruit Loops. But it's not just kids that get confused about where fruit comes from. I mean, how many of you think that this apple came from a seed? I mean, you plant a seed, the tree grows up, there's the apple, you pick it, right? That's how we get apples. No, not really. No, this, well, this apple did come from a seed. There was a seed, but that seed was planted over 150 years ago. This apple came from a tree that was, that was planted in 1978. See, the way that we get apples is through grafting. You don't plant a seed because if you plant a seed, you don't know what you're going to get. So if you want the same kind of apple, you have to graft it. So it's, it's a very simple process. You take just a little twig off of the apple tree that you like. And then you get some apple roots and cut a little notch there to, uh, so you can put the pieces together. 
a little bit of tape. And this is how you make an apple tree. Now you can't, uh, can't do that this time of year. You gotta do it in late winter or spring before things start to grow. But if this was that time, and we planted this, then this little piece of stem would grow into an entire tree that's just like the tree we took that from. And that's how we get all the apple varieties that, that we eat. They all start with one tree. It starts at the beginning. This is, uh, these are wealthy apples. This is a wealthy apple. It's the first eating apple ever grown in Minnesota. Back in the 1850s, Peter Gideon moved to a farm near Lake Minnetonka. And he was told when he moved to Minnesota that you could never grow apples in Minnesota, that it was too cold, the winters are too harsh, no tree would ever survive. But he was determined to prove people wrong. So he got 30 apple trees and he brought them with him and he planted them on his farm and they all died. So then he sent away for more little pieces and he planted, planted seeds and he got more apple trees and conservatively, over the next decade, he planted 50,000 trees. Some people estimate he planted up to a million. And of all those trees that he planted, just one survived. And that became the basis for the wealthy apple. And it's named wealthy because that was his wife's first name. Um, her name was Wealthy. I don't know where that name came from, but... But that apple then became the basis of the entire apple industry in, in Minnesota. And all the, the ones that were developed after that People began to, to develop the Honeycrisp and the Harrelson and the Zestar and the Sweet Tango. And every one of those varieties goes back to, to a single tree from which little pieces were clipped off. Because people clipped off pieces of that, that tree and they sent these little wealthy stems across the, the northern part of the United States and at one time, it became the third most grown apple in the entire country because it could survive the cold northern climate. It all goes back to that one apple tree. It all goes back to a single source. And Galatians 5 tells us that the same is true of the fruit of the Spirit. All those things, love and joy, peace and patience, there's a single source that it goes back to. Jesus, he describes it this way in chapter 15. He doesn't talk about a tree, but he talks about a vine. That he is the vine, and we're the little branches that are a part of it. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that does does not bear fruit. Well, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. And apart from me, you can do nothing. It's a pretty clear picture, isn't it? That for a branch to be fruitful, it needs to be connected to the vine. I mean, the, the little branch, it can't just uh, hang out all by itself in the air and expect to produce fruit. It has to be connected to the vine. And Jesus says the same of him. If we want to have those things in our life that we're missing, we need to connect with him. Because it's that, it's that vine and the roots that, that that vine is connected to that provide all the life-giving nourishment and water that it takes for the branches to produce fruit. In the same way in our lives, 
It's Christ who provides that nourishment and that support that allows us to have a fruitful life. Says, Jesus says, you want, to, you want to have a fruitful life? You want to have those things? Then stay connected to me. Stick with me. Because he is the source. He is the source of all those things that we're missing in our lives. There's another uh, scripture in the Bible that, that also illustrates this. It's in Romans 11. And here it's not an, an apple tree, nor is it a grapevine, but here it's the fruit of an olive tree. And it actually talks about grafting like this. It says that we are like a wild branch of an olive grafted onto a, a good olive tree. And, and he uses that uh, to describe how we are connected to God's people. We weren't originally there. We weren't originally there with Moses. Uh, we weren't originally there with Abraham. We weren't originally there and all those things of the Old Testament happened. We weren't Israelites. We weren't Jews. And yet God has grafted us on. God has made us a part of that story, a part of those people, so that all the promises of the Old Testament are also ours as well. God has taken us like a little branch and grafted us onto the tree. Because that's the other weird thing about fruit trees. You can take a branch from one kind of, of apple tree, a little piece, and you can cut off a branch of another one and graft this on there, and this branch will grow and it will provide the same kind of apples as this was. And so you can take an apple tree, and people have done this, where they have put a hundred different kinds of apples, each branch a different kind, and they've grafted those on so that one apple tree provides all of those kinds of apples. And it's the same way with us. We are connected. We're all different. But we've been connected onto God's story. We've connected onto God's olive tree, as he says, in Romans 11. Here's, here's the actual words. If some of the branches have been broken off, and you, though a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive root. Do not consider yourselves to be superior to those other branches. If you do, consider this. You do not support the root, but the root supports you. We may not have been around with the original disciples. We may not have been a part of the original people of God, but we have been grafted on, each one of us unique, each one of us different, but all receiving life from the same roots and trunk. And even a little branch attached to deep roots, even a little branch attached to a strong vine can produce wonderful fruit. So for the next five weeks, we are going to look at how we can find the joy and the peace and the, and the love and the kindness that all those fruits that is talked about in Galatians 5 all those things that we want in our lives. We're going to see how we can cultivate them through the power of Christ and through the Holy Spirit to grow those in our lives. You want love? You can find it. You want joy? You can find it. You want peace? You can find it. You want self-control? You can find it. Patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness too, all those things. You can find it all by going to the source. If you want fake fruit, you can find that too. You want imitation love or, or false joy or, or fake peace? Yeah, there's plenty of that out there too. If you want fruit loops, they're there to eat. There are plenty of places in this world that will, will give you those kinds of things. Things that may look like fruit but really aren't. And I have to admit, I ate my share of fruit loops back before I became diabetic. And I ate my share of things in life that I thought would give me that joy and peace. 
but really was just empty calories. And now, now I seek real fruit, both physically, but, but also spiritually. The fruit that comes from the Spirit, that comes through Jesus. In preparing for this sermon, I, I checked all over Minnesota to find an orchard that had wealthy apples that were for sale this week. Finally found one uh, in Woodbury, and they had just one bushel. And uh, when I talked to the owner, the owner said, uh, you know, other than you, the only people that request wealthy apples um, are old women making pies. (laughs) And for them, you can't make a pie unless you have wealthies. Well, I, I bought his only bushel. And they're spread out on the counter back there. And uh, I want you to take one after the service. And whether you eat it immediately or bring it home with you, whenever you eat it, remember this. That, that every wealthy apple began with one tree, the original source that Peter Gideon planted on his farm. And as you remember that, also remember this, that the one source to find the kind of life that we're looking for is also available to us. And it's God, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Oh God, We pray that we might have those things that are missing in our life. Whether it uh, be peace right now or whether we need joy, whether we're seeking kindness or, or patience. Lord, we know that these are things you grow in us through your Holy Spirit. So we ask that your Spirit would be with us that you would guide us and direct us and bring about in our lives all those fruits that are that make life the abundant life that you want for us. So Lord, not only touch us with your spirit now, but, but also throughout the week. May we walk with you and may it be a fruitful walk. Amen.